Welcome to the Philippines Premier Motor Show. This is Autofocus. I'm Ray Louis Gamboa. Here are our features on this edition of your electronic magazine, exclusive to the automobile and its industry. Starting off with reviews of two vehicle models presently in the local market. A plug-in hybrid SUV from Mitsubishi, the Outlander PHEV, and a compact MPV from Maxxis, the G50 1.5 Premium Automatic. Plus a feature-to-feature -feature comparison of two subcompact sedans, the Hyundai Reina 1.4 GL versus the Toyota Vios 1.5G CVT. On Autopedia, we'll talk about the importance of following your vehicle's preventive maintenance schedule, and together with the latest news and developments in the local auto industry, we shall have the launch of the new Ford Ranger as our special feature. The next 60 minutes is all about the automobile. This is all of focus, and we'll be right back after this short break. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Humans choose more challenging paths to go up and over our biggest obstacle, ourselves. New Ford Ranger FX4 Max. Live the Ranger life. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the automobile show. We start this edition of your electronic magazine with a review of one of the latest automobile models from Mitsubishi. Mitsubishi says it's the most popular plug-in hybrid electric vehicle in the world. Maybe we can discover why the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV has this distinction in this edition of Car Review. Mitsubishi was the first to roll out an electric vehicle for mass production the iMe EV back in 2009. Four years later, Mitsubishi was again leading the way with the launch of the first plug-in hybrid SUV, the Outlander PHEV. It took a number of years after that for Mitsubishi Motor Philippines to believe the local market is ready for the Outlander PHEV. But here it is now and it looks positively electrifying with the sleekest yet interpretation of Mitsubishi's dynamic shield concept fascia, black painted with dark chrome plating. At 4,695 millimeters long, 1,800 millimeters wide, and 1,710 millimeters at its highest point, and with a 2,670 millimeters wheelbase and 190 millimeters minimum ground clearance, the Outlander PHEV also looks sleek and smooth from the side, with straight accent lines and smooth rounded curves. Chrome door handles and belt line molding, silver roof rails and rear spoiler add touches of elegance and sport. It comes with all the latest in LED lighting tech, from the headlamps, daytime running lights, fog lamps to the rear combination lamps. The Outlander PHEV is both spacious and elegant with dark leather seats that match the synthetic leather inserts in the front and rear door trim. The seats have body-hugging side and thigh supports with head restraints of synthetic leather. The driver's seat feature four-way electronic adjust. Look up and you can see the sky through the sunroof with power tilt and slide functions and anti-trapping feature. A switch near the driver's seat opens and closes the power tailgate automatically, a great convenience for SUVs. Up front is a clear and tall view of the road as well as an elegant dashboard with the instrument panel that provides all the information the driver needs to know of the PHEV operations. Then there's the 8-inch smartphone link display with audio system that's integrated with the Mitsubishi Power Sound System that plays through four speakers. The system works with both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. 
Underneath the touchscreen display are the controls for the Dual Zone Automatic Air Conditioner. Adding to convenience are USB port power outlets on the center floor console and the luggage area, as well as automatic dimming mirrors. But the best thing about the Outlander PHEV's powertrain system that features a 2.4-liter 16-valve 4-cylinder DOHC MEVEC gasoline engine, two permanent magnet synchronous motor, one on the front and the other on the rear axle, front power drive unit, a rear electric motor control unit, a lithium-ion battery, and Mitsubishi Super All-Wheel Control System or SAWC. In essence, the PHEV powertrain has three drive modes, full electric with the motors powered by the battery, Series Hybrid with the engine providing power to the motors and Parallel Hybrid with engine powering the vehicle at high speeds with assistance from motors when needed. These are automatically selected by the Outlander sophisticated power management system. But the driver can also select which mode he prefers using a joystick-like knob depending on whether he wants quiet all-electric short drive or longer drives in the countryside or how he wants to manage battery usage. The SAWC comes integrated with active yaw control anti-lock brake system, active stability control, and traction control. By managing all this, the SAWC provides great traction, stability, and linear handling, all the while providing safety, comfort, and fuel efficiency. The driver can now select SAWC controls, the power sent to the front and rear wheels, selecting normal, sport, and lock modes, depending on road conditions. All this means that the Outlander PHEV is fun, fuel efficient, and a stable drive in virtually all road conditions. You gotta save a lot of the cost of fuel and feel good about helping the environment. Until charging stations are established in the country, owners can charge the Outlander PHEV batteries through regular power outlets at home or office using the onboard charger and charging cable. Charging time is around 5.5 hours. The engine can also charge the batteries with the generator. The battery also recovers energy through a regenerative brake system. The suspension features McPherson struts with coil spring and stabilizer in the front and a multi-link system with stabilizer in the rear. The brake uses two pot ventilated discs in front and solid discs in the rear. It comes with hill start assist as well as brake auto hold. The Outlander PHEV Mitsubishi Motors Philippines brought to the country also comes with 3-point ELR seatbelts with pre-tensioner and force limiter for driver and front seat passenger. 3-point ELR seatbelts for 3 in the second row seat, dual airbags, credit airbags. Also added for safety are Miss Acceleration Prevention System, Blind Spot Warning, Rear Cross Traffic Alert, Lane Change Assist, Forward Collision Mitigation System, Adaptive Cruise Control, Auto High Beam, and Multi Around Monitor. The arrival of the Outlander PHEV comes at a time when more and more automakers and distributors are offering hybrids in the local market. These include luxury brands also rolling out hybrids and PHEVs. This could signal the start of greater acceptance for vehicles not powered by fossil fuels. The latest auto industry news and developments right after this break. I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Make looking good easy with the Mirage G4. Make long distance easy with the Mirage G4.
welcome back to Auto Focus. I will now have the latest auto industry news. Isuzu says the all-new D-Max was built from the ground up with a bold, emotional, and smart design concept that it hopes will find acceptance among pickup truck buyers. With the arrival of the new generation D-Max, Isuzu Philippines now offers 10 variants of the pickup with retail prices ranging from 857,000 pesos for the D-Max RZ4 E4x2 single cab manual up to 1.825 million pesos for the top-of-the-line D-Max 3-liter 4x4 LSE automatic. During the digital DMAX launch stream on Isuzu's official Facebook page and YouTube channel, Isuzu Philippines President Hajime Koso said Isuzu made sure that the all-new DMAX will have a wide range of choices to cater to every consumer's needs. Depending on variant and price point, the new Isuzu DMAX is powered either by the new 4JJ3 TCX, which uses a highly advanced Isuzu common rail system to deliver 190 PS of power and 450 Nm of torque, or the RZ4 ETC, which generates 150 PS and 350 Nm of torque. Again, depending on variant, the all-new D-Max will come with all or much of the state-of-the-art driver assist, smart connectivity, and safety features including the 10.1-inch infotainment system, Bluetooth connectivity, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and voice control, and the advanced driver assist system that employs state-of-the-art sensors and a first-in-its-class smart dual cam. Isuzu offers freebies for early buyers, including a special limited edition Isuzu D-Max miniature for these first 200 buyers. It is also raffling off 50 limited edition D-Max G-Shock watches to all qualified D-Max customers nationwide. Introducing the all-new Isuzu D-MAX into new heights. There's a new landmark along Sukat Skyway. It's called the Phoenix Block, a multi-purpose retail compound that features a Phoenix gas station, a Family Mart convenience store, a Phoenix Super LPG hub, an AutoWorks plus automotive care shop, possible digital payments, and limitless digital transactions. Today is the inaugural opening of the Phoenix block here at the Sukat Skyway. This brings together all of our brands in one area to serve the communities, to serve more people or serve more customers. Also on offer at the Phoenix block is a Wendy's takeout and drive through counter, a first in Asia for the popular restaurant chain. Phoenix President Henry Albert Fadulion says the Phoenix block is a great representation of what the Phoenix brand is today, more than just a fuel. It may have started as a petroleum company, but Phoenix now offers a more extensive portfolio of products and services, offering a complete and cohesive selection of brands that complement a full lifestyle, he adds. Phoenix plans to replicate the block in more communities, where the aim is to make the Phoenix block a staple element in the everyday life in a community catering to residents and passerbys. Right now, we are still identifying the area because doing a concept like this requires space. But this is something that we would like to do because we actually want to be closer to more communities and more customers. Honda Cars Philippines is making it lighter and more convenient for Honda buyers affected by the government requiring a cash bond or safeguard duty on sales of imported vehicles. The Department of Trade and Industry ordered the imposition of a provisional safeguard duty of 70,000 pesos on imported passenger cars and 110,000 pesos on imported light commercial vehicles starting on February 1. According to Honda, it is complying with the order but will require a lesser amount in cash deposit for the bond from buyers. Initially, Honda said it will only ask from 7,000 to 60,000 pesos in cash bond depending on vehicle year model and variant of the City, Civic, Brio, and HRV. According to Honda, in the event the Bureau of Customs returns the cash bond following the outcome of the investigation by the Tariff Commission, it will refund the amount of cash deposit to its customers accordingly. Honda said it will announce the amount of cash deposits for other models shortly. It added that there are still stocks of Honda units not affected by the safeguard duty available for sale. Those are the latest news and developments in the automotive industry. We shall take another short break. Stay with us. I'll be right back. I think my 
dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Welcome back to Auto Focus, the country's premier automobile TV and online magazine. Here's our feature-to-feature -feature comparison of the latest automobile models belong to the same category on Head to Head. Affordable subcompact sedans are expected to sell in volume as the automotive market recovers with authorities' move to open up the economy with the COVID-19 pandemic still a threat. Head-to-head -head pits two subcompact sedans that were selling well before the lockdowns. The Hyundai Reina did well in 2019, landing second in sales in the subcompact sedan segment in its debut year. The Toyota Vios has been the best seller for many years. In 2020, the Vios, the first model, just a makeover, launched online by Toyota when automakers and distributors were allowed to resume operations. This edition pits variants of the two competing subcompact sedans, the Hyundai Reina 1.4 GL 4-speed automatic and the Toyota Vios 1.5G CVT in a spec-to-spec -spec comparison. The Hyundai Reina is 4,300mm long, 1,705mm wide, and 1,460 millimeters tall, with a 2,570 millimeters long wheelbase. The exterior features include a distinctive hexagonal grille, halogen headlamps, body-colored side view mirrors. The Toyota Vios 1.5 GCVT is 4,425 millimeters long, 1,730 millimeters wide, and 1,475 millimeters tall, and with a 2,550 millimeters wheelbase. Exterior features include a glossy black front grille, three-tier LED headlamps, daytime running lights with line guide, and rear combination lamps, color-keyed power traceable side view mirrors with integrated turn signal lights, chrome door handles, 16-inch alloy wheels, and fin-type antenna. The Reina cabin has room to sit five adults comfortably. Interior features include fixed rear headrest, central door locks, power front windows, room lamps, air conditioning with manual controls, and sun visors for driver and front seat passenger. It comes with motor-driven power steering and tiltable steering wheel. The analog instrument cluster is complemented by a 2.8-inch LCD display for info such as average fuel consumption and other useful information. The standard Reina 1.4 GL4 AT is fitted with a one-dent AM-FM radio unit with USB connection. Hyundai also offers a Reina with its proprietary AVN or audio, video, and navigation head units, compatible with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as an option. The Vios 1.5G CVT also sits 5 comfortably, with the flat flooring adding volumes of rear leg room. It comes with a smart entry with push start button system, Optitron instrument paddle gauges, tiltable leather upholstered steering wheel with audio controls, and paddle shifter. Leather upholstered shift lever and knob. It's also got speed sending power door locks power windows with jam protection, and auto air conditioning. The infotainment system features a 7-inch touchscreen display and plays CDs and MP3 through six speakers and comes with a web link for iOS and Android devices with Bluetooth, USB, and aux connectivity. The Rain is powered by 1,368cc MPI or multi-point injector gasoline engine, generating 95 horsepower at 6,000 revolutions per minute and 132 Nm of torque at 4,000 RPM. The engine is mated to a 4-speed automatic transmission in the Reyna 1.4 GL Automatic. The suspension system uses McPherson struts with stabilizer in front and coupled portion beam axle in the rear. 
The brake system uses front discs and rear drums. The Vios 1.5 GCVT is powered by a 1,496 four-cylinder, 16-valve double overhead cam engine with dual VVTi and electronic fuel injection that generates 170 PS at 6,000 RPM and 140 Nm of torque at 4,200 RPM. The engine is mated to a continuous variable transmission that comes with Eco and Sport Drive modes. For safety, the Hyundai Reyna 1.4 GL Automatic comes with dual airbag, seat belts for 5, and anti-lock brake system. The Vios 1.5G comes with vehicle stability control, hill start assist, anti-lock brake system with electronic brake force distribution, back monitor and the Toyota vehicle security system with alarm and immobilizer. Safety features also include dual airbags, curtain and knee shield for driver, 3-point ELR seat belts with pre-tensioner and force limiter with driver and front seat passenger. 3-point seat belts for each of the 3 passengers in the rear, child lock protection, and high mount stop lamp. The Hyundai Reyna 1.4 GL automatic retails at 733,000, while the Toyota Vios 1.5G CVT retails at 1.56 million. Isuzu D-MAX into new heights. Motul is the most trusted motor oil of the top teams competing in some of the world's most grueling race competitions. The WRC, the WTCC, and the Japan GT. Motul is the only 100% fully synthetic motor oil in the market. It has antioxidation properties that prevent premature thickening and aging due to thermal stress and guarantees total engine protection. For more information about Motul engine oils, visit www.motul.com.ph. Humans choose more challenging paths to go up and over our biggest obstacle ourselves new ford ranger fx4 max live the ranger life welcome back to autofocus the country's premier automobile news and features electronic magazine our special feature is next up next is a special feature on the launch of the new ford ranger and unveiling of the live the ranger live campaign Ford Philippines has launched a whole new range of refreshed Rangers. While there was attention paid to new design cues that accentuated the Ford built tough concept and the interior update's focus was given to the live the Ranger life philosophy, Ford Philippines President and Managing Director P.K. Umashankar set the stage for the launch, the ode to Ford truck heritage and the philosophy with which Ford hopes to sell the Ranger. In 2020, the Ford Ranger became the best-selling 4x4 pickup truck in the Philippines market, while the Ford Territory emerged as a top-selling small SUV. Building on a solid momentum for the Ranger this year, we are excited to officially unveil today our enhanced Ranger lineup. Today, we will learn about Live the Ranger Life, the essence of how Ford celebrates the experience around the ownership of the Ranger and how it comes to life.
Ford unveiled the new looks of several variants of the already popular Rangers, from the bottom range to the top, the Ranger XLS, the XLT, the FX4, the Wild Track, and the Raptor. All variants sport a bolder look with new design elements, and Ford says it gives them a stronger impression and tougher stance on the road, with the variants coming with options for manual and automatic transmission with different trim levels. In tier amenities and tech functions, the number comes to 13 Rangers to choose from. This starts from the bottom range Ranger 2.2 XLS 4x2 manual at 1.063 million pesos to the range topping 1.998 million peso 2 liter bi turbo Raptor 4x4 automatic. All, however, come with Ford built tough DNA as well as Ford's promise of building trucks that are easier and more comfortable to drive, and also with smart connectivity that's needed and sought in the digital age. The Ranger has evolved over the years with enhancements that made it easier to drive and ride. With spaciousness and comfort, legroom, contoured seats, and enhanced suspension that made one comfortable not only for long drives or hours in traffic, but also off-road. This pickup truck has helped us overcome whatever challenges life has thrown at us. Along with the new Refresh Ranger lineup, Ford also unveiled the new Live the Ranger Life Philosophy. Essentially, it's about how the Ranger reflects and supports the values that Ford pickup owners live by. These values are encapsulated in Ford's own words and phrases. Ranger owners go up and over. There's no challenge they don't tackle head-on. When they see a mountain range they want to go over, not around. Ranger owners can't help but help. They are doers. They pitch in. When people need help or assistance, they are always there. Where there isn't a path, Ranger owners carve one. Ranger pickups redefine the category. Ranger owners don't wait for others to lead. They have a vision and objective and are fearless in what they need to do to achieve our goals. Ranger owners bring others along the journey. Ranger owners believe it's great to work hard and achieve recognition. But even better, it's to share with those who mean the most, family and friends. Ranger owners make our own fun. There's no such thing as all work and no play, and when it's time to play, Ranger owners know how to make the most of those opportunities. In this, the Ranger is awesome and fun to drive. It's always been said that the vehicles reflect the owner's character and personality. Are pickup trucks built to attract a certain kind of owner? Ford certainly has defined the owner that it believes deserves a Ranger. Are there many? Are you one? I think my dad is secretly a superhero. He's the coolest, smartest, strongest person alive. No matter where we go, he always makes sure I feel safe. And he isn't afraid of anything. My dad likes to call that the power to lead. I call it his superpower. Be it fine dining, a romantic garden wedding, a relaxed casual meal, or an important business event, Illustrado is the place to go. Aside from its famed paella, the Illustrado restaurant, which is located within the history-laden walled city of Intramuros, is also the favorite destination of food gourmands for its famous calios and lengua and other classic gustatory offerings. Illustrado Restaurant, only for the foodies. Welcome back. We have more cars for you to know and appreciate as we have our second car review this week. In choosing an MPV for the family, will one more extra seat make a difference? Car review takes a look at one eight-seater compact MPV competing among a slew of seven-seaters. Max's Philippines has brought in the G50, a compact eight-seater MPV, to compete in a segment made up mostly of seven-seaters. The G50 arrived in variants, 
the top end 1.5 premium, the middle priced 1.5 Elite, and the 1.5 Pro. At 4,825mm long, 1,825mm wide, and 1,800mm tall with roof rails, and 1,778mm without, the G50 in size, basic box, and bonnet configuration, design and styling, is your classic modern compact multi-purpose vehicle. Focusing on the premium variant that we have, modern touches include the sharp creases, swept back LED headlights in the premium variant, daylight running lights, rear spoiler, rear windows defogger, power adjustable side mirrors, and best spoke 17 inch alloy wheels. A largish grille with horizontal slats and the Max's name, all in chrome lend the G50 a strong presence on the road. The premium gets a panoramic sunroof, as well as roof rails. Maxxis has also filled the G50 variants it brought here with lots of smart technologies for convenience, performance, and safety. All three variants have keyless entry with push start system. Inside the G50 1.5 Premium is a roomy and comfortable cabin for driver and seven passengers with leather seats. All variants share a multifunction steering wheel with controls for such things as the audio system as well as cruise control. The G50 Premium, as well as the Elite, perhaps has the largest touchscreen for the infotainment system in its segment, a 12.3 inch display. The system features two USB ports, Bluetooth connectivity, and six speakers. Only the Premium variant has mobile wireless charging. There's also an air conditioning system with automatic controls and rear aircon vents. Another cool feature in the Premium is the power tailgate. MPVs need to have a powertrain that provides a good balance of performance and fuel efficiency, as well as a comfortable and stable ride. Underneath the hood of the G50 is 1,490cc four-cylinder turbocharged and intercooled gasoline engine that generates 169 PS at 5,500 revolutions per minute and 250 newton meters of torque from 1,700 to 4,300 RPM. The engine is mated to a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission that sends power to the front wheels. Stopping power comes from a brake system that uses solid discs on all wheels. The G50 suspension system features front independent McPherson struts and torsion beams in the rear. Maxxis has installed active and passive safety features in the G50 with the premium getting more than the Elite and the Pro. All G50 variants come with driver and front passenger airbags, with the premium getting additional front side airbags, three-point seat belts for eight, ISOFIX anchors. All three also have electronic parking brake with auto hold, emergency brake assist, hill hold control, electronic stabilization program, tire pressure monitoring system, and a mobilizer. Parking sensors and reverse camera are standard in G50 variants, but only the premium and the elite have 360 degree views and both front and rear sensors. The G50 ticks off all the boxes that define a compact MPV and Maxxis goes the extra mile with more features to make the total package more appealing. An eight-seater with a lot of trendy features, the G50 is worth a look and test drive for those seeking to buy a compact MPV. Know more about your car and how to take care of it here on Autopedia.
in Speed Lab, it's not all about making cars go fast and more horsepower, more torque, and all of that. It's all we also do boring stuff like maintenance, like on this 2009 Montero. It's a 10 year old car. The things start to happen, noises start to come out. You'll hear tok 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 ting 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 nyik nyik nyik. That's normal for pretty much any car. Anything mechanical that moves will eventually develop some sort of sound because it's wear and tear over time. Uh, we already took this car out for a test drive and from initially what we can tell, steering rack needs work because when you turn it, there's a tok 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 sound. And when you brake, there's also a clunk sound. So that means we have to check the brakes as well. Actually, you don't have to wait for the various sounds to come out. The reason why it's called PMS is called Preventive Maintenance Service. You prevent it from happening before it happens. So, very good example, stabilizer bushings. These normally wear out anywhere from a year to about three years, depending on the car. You don't have to wait for it to have a sound. But the bad part about being in the Philippines is, hindi pa sira yan, wag mo palitan. Thereby, there is no prevention that's happening. That is always the mentality of the Filipino people. Kasi hindi sira, bali ko papalitan, gastos lang yan. And then when you ask for an estimate from the CASA of the preventive maintenance schedule, they include a lot of things. Uh, let's say stabilizer bushing, shock absorber, axle boot, CV joint, shock mounting. All of these things are not broken yet, but may about to break, will break, can possibly break. And then you get surprised of the bill. Oh, but ang dami. So it's more of a culture thing, more than anything else. So if you really want a properly maintained car, even if it's not broke, you change it. <laughs> the CASA's job is to maintain your car. Maintenance means to keep it running problem-free. Things like weird sounds coming from the suspension, there is already a problem. When the CASA gives you an enormous long list of things that need to be changed, it is because it is what, let's say, Honda or Toyota, the factory gives them, okay, at X number of kilometers, change this, change that even if it's not broken, for worry-free performance for the next X number of kilometers or miles. This may look very daunting to almost anyone. Your car is in pieces. But that's the thing about cars. As long as it moves, it will break down, it will wear out. And the only real way to tell if a part is really worn out is not just by looking at it, you have to take it out and test it. A very good example is this one. Most everybody knows this is a shock absorber. This is what happens to a shock when it's not working. I mean, it looks okay. There's no leak. Physically and visually, everything looks fine, but... <laughs> you should be able to push it down easily and it should go up. Well, I can't push it down and it don't go up no more. So, hindi na yung ginagawa trabaho. It is absorbing no shock in your car. So, the result is actually matalbog yung koche or matagtag. In this case, it's matagtag because it is resisting the motion of the spring. So, this shock is effectively throw away. Other small things that get broken are almost always rubber related. The metal itself, let's say this one, this is the wall joint. Itong bakal hindi naman nasisira to eh. I mean, this is fine, this is fine, this is fine, overall this is fine. But the bearing inside here is actually a cup and a ball. Over time, pag gumagalaw, it wears out and gets loose. This, I should not be able to move by hand. Hindi dapat malambot to, dapat matigas to. And then, the easiest way to figure it out, if there's something wrong with it, you hit it really hard like this. This happens when you steer the car, so in this Montero's case, sabi niya, pag todo liko, may tumutunog na, tok, tok, tok. Chances are, it's this one. So that's another thing. Small non-critical items are like this one, steering axle boot. If this is still on the car, physically, okay, okay naman ah. But only pag tinanggal mo, dun mo malalaman na punit na pala. And oil, grease will leak out through here. And pag nawawalan ng grasa, umiingay yung pyesa. So we're changing it with a new one, fresh and new, no hole, no nothing. Other items that have ball joints like this one, this is also part of the, the steering assembly. This is also soft, I should not be able to move this by hand, so... Should not make that sound also. So, tapo na rin to. 
We have replacement parts for pretty much anything uh, available on the market. If the Casa has it, there's always an equivalent replacement part. Cheaper than Casa, pretty much just as good also. Other things that we look out for are items that get worn out, like here, brake shoe. This is especially true for drum brake cars because it is behind the brake shoe, as in hindi mo nakikita. Part of periodic maintenance actually involves taking this entire thing out and physically checking the brake shoe here. This, by the way, is already we replaced the brake shoe and this is the original size, ganun kakapal. This is what your brake shoe is now, less than half the size already, so palitin na. And among other things, that brake rotors for the front. As you notice, this is very shiny right now because this has been refaced. This is the cheaper way to do it. You can actually reface rotors up to about two times before they get too thin to reface and then you have to replace it because this does get worn down over time. So this is still fine. Most of the kalampag and other things that you mo while driving is pretty much suspension related. So periodic maintenance means visually checking each and every part by a shop that knows what it's doing. And then if needed be, take out the part to physically inspect it and test like what we just did a while ago to see if it's still working as it should. This is also why if you delay periodic maintenance and then wait until na medyo madami ng sira, when you ask for an estimate from the casa or another shop, mahaba yung listahan. Eh, madaming sira eh. And can you tipid yung paggawa? Of course you can. No, gagawin mo lang to. Ayaw mo to kasi mahal. Ayaw mo rin to kasi mahal. Ito, tsaka na to. But just like a person, you cure one ailment, the rest of the ailment are still there. Madadamay at madadamay yan. Brake pad is actually here. Manipis na rin eh. That's less than half. New brake pads are like this. Old brake pads versus new brake pad. This is what's left on the old brake pad. This is what a new brake pad is. So, times two. Yes, they are now ceramic brakes. There are no more metallic brakes. There are no more asbestos brakes as some of them old timers may remember. So, it's pretty much this one. They're all ceramic now. So, the noise and other weird noises are pretty much a thing of the past already. <laughs> this is what's the inside of your drum brake. Looks pretty daunting. This is the one that does the handbrake. This is the piston. Pag tumapa ka ng preno, fluid goes here. Bumubuka to para itulak dun sa brake shoe. That's what actually does the braking. This thing here is the handbrake. Yung ratatatat, narinig mo, ito yun. <laughs> here, fresh delivery from KYB Philippines, we have a set of new shocks for the Montero. This, by the way, is a KYB XLG. XLG is their line of OEM quality replacement shock absorbers. And they are most normally known as KYB Color Black. Very simple. And it has to look exactly the same as your original shock absorber. Kailangan pareho itsura nito. Pag hindi pareho itsura, hindi papasok sa kotse. Same height, same everything. Remember the shock where it is so hard to push down. And don't go up. Your new shock absorber should be fairly easy to push down. And goes back up. This one will give you back the right comfort in your car. Okay, our maintenance on the Montero is done. We've replaced a bunch of items in the suspension, most notably the shock absorbers, uh, the rubber bushings underneath, stabilizer links, and some of you maintenance items like axle boot, it's torn, we replaced that. And almost all the kalampag and noise and tick 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 tok 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 sounds are not present anymore. I won't say it drives like brand new, but it definitely drives a lot better then before it came into the shop and had all of this done. Then after everything, we put it on the dyno again and then we retuned it. So we got 200 horses. Uh, not bad for a 10-year-old car. So once again, like the name says, PMS Preventive Maintenance Service. You prevent the, it from breaking down. So bago masira, palitan. Wag yung Pilipino way na pagsira at kapapalitan.
So here at Speed Lab, we not only do uh, racing and performance stuff, we actually do maintenance also, the boring things. Uh, change oil, spark plug, engine overhaul we have to do also. Because first and foremost, if you want more power from your car, you have to make sure that your car is running well and in good condition first. You can't make a car more powerful if there's a bunch of problems wrong with it. So we have to address that and that's what we do also. Anything mechanical as far as engine and suspension related is concerned, we also do that. Have a problem with your car, weird noises, bring it over to the shop so we can test drive it and most importantly, we can hear what the sounds are because you can message us through Facebook also, but saying something like, May ingay yung koche ko at may kalampag does not really help us in diagnosing what the noise is. So it's better to bring the car in for us to see, test drive. You drive it, you let us hear what the noises are, and then together we can look at the car and we can point out, oh, ito, 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 this, this, this is the potential problem, this is what we see, it may tulo, it may tagas, and all of that. So at least you get a first hand view and what exactly is wrong with your car, and to know that, okay, these are the things that I need to replace. That's our feature on Autopedia this week. Taking care of your ride has been made easier. And that's Autofocus this week. We hope you have found this edition of your electronic automobile magazine informative as well as entertaining. You can also check us out on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram accounts. On behalf of my dad, Butch Gamboa, this has been your host, Ray Louis Gamboa. Please stay safe and healthy.